to do. Amen. And it's going to be our best year yet. It's going to be amazing. And some of you are like, well, did you just see the beginning of this year? Did you see last year? Some of you are still thinking it's 2020, the year that never ends. But no, it's, it's a new day. It's a new season for what God wants to do in your life. And hey, before we get started into this new series, turn to someone and tell them, this is going to be your best year yet. This is going to be your best year yet. So good. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, and we are going to jump into the Word of God today. Some of the things I began to share last, uh, last Wednesday night, I want to share some more with you in that same passage. But Joshua chapter 1, to give you some understanding of the context of what's happening, Israel had just come out of Egypt. They were delivered from the slavery and the bondage of which they were being held in by Pharaoh and by the Egyptians. And now we see that God has brought them out and they had, he had done so many miracles, but now they face some different challenges. Now they face some challenges that are in front of them, like uh, the promised land that has giants in it. They, they, they face challenges like the Jordan River, it, it floods stage and having to cross it. They face challenges is like not being equipped. I mean, this is a, a nation that was never trained for military battle, and yet God was calling them to do some impossible things. And you know, 2021 might feel like an impossible task to you. Maybe you look at it, maybe you come here today, and maybe you have some anxiety, maybe some fears, some worries about what's about to happen. Uh, maybe you're discouraged by some things that you thought were going to come through, and you're disappointed today. And I just want you to get your eyes today on the thing that really matters. His name is Jesus. And uh, as we lift him up today, as we get into this passage, I believe there's some principles that are really going to help refine us and change us and, and uh, give us new perspective in what God is doing in the earth. So we are excited. I'm excited. Those of you joining us online, don't forget to put in the comments your best year yet as well. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these next few moments. As we open up your word, we know that you will speak to us. We know that your spirit's moving in this church, in this place today. And we thank you for what you're about to do in us and through us in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, and the Bible says in verse 1, The death of Moses, the Lord's servant, after that, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun. And he said, Moses is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead people of Israel across the Jordan into the land I'm giving them. He said, I, what I promised I promise you what I promised Moses, wherever you set your foot on the land, I will give it to you. He goes on to describe the land, and then in verse 5, no one will be able to stand up against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses, and I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the ones who will lead these people to possess the land I swore to their ancestors. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the instructions Moses gave you. Don't deviate from them, turning to the right or to the left. And then you will be successful. Hallelujah. I will be successful in everything that I do. Study the book of the law and meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. You know, you ought to just jot it down. Extreme obedience brings extreme blessing. Extreme obedience, that's what God was saying, brings extreme blessing. This is my command. Be strong and courageous and do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God will, is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Isn't he with us today? Isn't he for us today? Number one is as we begin our best year yet series is really laying the foundation. The foundation matters. You know, just like the foundation of any building or business or whatever it looks like matters, the foundation of what you lay your year really does matter. That's why we start in prayer and fasting, and some of you are doing six to six, other of you are doing a, a full juice and water fast, many of you are doing three days here or maybe ten. Whatever God's leading you to do, just engage those principles, and you're going to begin to lay the foundation for your best year yet. One of the things that I love about what God was doing in this passage was he was getting Joshua to a place where he could do something with him. As a matter of fact, when he comes to Joshua, he says to Joshua, he said, listen, Moses is dead, but I'm about to do a new thing. 
I'm about to do something even greater in your life. And I just want you to know, Joshua, that what I'm doing in the earth isn't contingent upon Moses being where he was. Uh Uh-oh, I feel like telling some people here today that what God is doing in the earth is not conditional based off who is in the the office of the president of the United States. I feel like telling some people today that maybe the, the, the person that you thought would be in isn't in, and you might have some disappointment, but I'm here to tell you that there's a God who said, I, I've got to get, to get you to see, Joshua, I've got to get you to see that my promise isn't contingent upon human beings and what they're trying to do. My promise and my covenant is based off eternal principles that if I said it, I'll do it in your life. And somebody today ought to rejoice because we have a 2021 ahead of us with a God that's for us and a God that's with us. No matter what comes our way, we have a God whose promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. See, if you're not careful, you'll start leaning on your own understanding. Uh, you know, you'll start leaning on what, what, what you can do. Uh, Mark, I'm going to have you. <laughs> he saw it coming. He saw it coming. And, and, and can I get your hand? Can, I, can you help me out, my man? Thanks. You just stand right here and then, um, and then hop up real quick. I, I know you, don't wanna, you didn't want that, but you got it, all right? So if you just stand here. Here's, here's the, the lives of many people, all right? The Bible says this in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with just a portion of your heart. I, I mean, 50%. Wait, wait, he didn't say that either. Uh, 100, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then the next thing's just as important. And lean not to your own understanding. See, here's what we do in our humanness many times. We think this is the way God's got to do it. This is, though, my understanding. These are my understandings. These are my opinions on things. And so here's what we have a lot of people doing is they, they start leaning on their own understanding. And, and, and wait, no, it, it can't be that though. Maybe it's this. And no, no, maybe maybe not that. But but look, oh my, listen, really, Moose. I, I thought this was, I thought this was even more. Uh, but you, you see how you see how this is how a lot of people look in their faith and 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 look how unstable I really am. I, I, I'm moving from my understanding. I'm moving from one place. To, look how unstable my life really is. Look, look how, look at this. I mean, this, this is just amazing. I mean, look, now it's not even there in my life. I mean, <laughs> y'all can have a seat. Give them a hand. They're doing awesome. See, as crazy as that was, that's what some people's lives look like. Oh, you know, I thought this was going to happen. I, I thought this was going to, what were you doing? You were leaning on your own understanding. What God was trying to get across to Joshua was that my promises are bigger than humanity. My promises are bigger than any person or thing. My promises are eternally secure. See, my blessing is unshakable in 2021. I just want to remind you. See, if your promises and your purposes for your life and the plans God had for you are conditional, then we would just be everywhere. See, either they're conditional based off of what's happening in the world, or they are secure based off what God already said. See, the blessing and hand of God upon us in 2020 was, was not based off conditions. That's why we prosper. That's why we grow. That's why we're continuing to grow. Not because of anything in our own might or our own power, our own wisdom. It's because if God said it, we believe it. He's going to do it in our lives. And that is not based off conditions. But some people are still under the mindset that, that, that God is a God that has conditions based on what's happening in the world. Let me tell you, God has more ways than one to bless your life, establish your life, cause you to to prosper in everything he's called you to do. Come on, don't just see it one way. Come on, get your eyes on Jesus today. See, that's what he was trying to get Joshua to see. He said, you know what, You you are leaning on your own understanding. 
You thought Moses was always going to be there, but Moses is gone. Come on, some of you are disappointed. Some of you are looking at what's happening in our world today, and you see the corruption, and you see the things that are happening. You're like, man, what, what in the world is God doing? I thought he was going to do it like this. And then when he didn't do it like you thought, you were disappointed. You got discouraged, and you're like, man, does God even hear me when I pray? Maybe that was what you thought should happen. Maybe that was your own understanding. Come on. You know, there's a lot of things that people are placing their hope and their faith and their trust in. You know, some people place their faith more than who is in the office of the President of the United States than they do in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, you know, as we believe God for certain things, and whatever happens, if it doesn't, if things don't happen the way I thought they would, I'm still not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. I'm moved by the sure foundation of the word of God. His promises, he said, they are yes and they are amen. I have an unconditional covenant with Almighty God that is not based on what's happening out there. If I'll do my part, if I will obey, extreme obedience will bring about extreme blessing and I'm not going to define what that looks like or how it will transpire I just know this that I am not connected to the earthly sources of things that are temporary I'm not going to put all my faith and all my hope and my confidence in a man or a person or a political party or a governmental system my confidence is still in Christ and Christ alone he is the cornerstone he is the chief cornerstone. The one the builders rejected has become the cornerstone by which everything is built. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so why would, I be, why would I be shaken? See, if you're not careful, if you live your life like that based off what is temporal, then you'll have such extreme ups and downs. You'll be waiting on everything to be just right and then you to have peace. You'll be waiting on everything just right. Then I can have joy again. You know, I've heard it a thousand times. You know, well, when's things going to get back to, to the way they were? When's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? Well, a, a better question is, is are, are you waiting on something to go back to something or to evolve into something to have peace and joy and blessing? Or do you have a mindset, whatever it looks like out there, it doesn't matter. I serve a God who's a covenant-keeping God, and he came to remind Joshua, I was with Moses in his generation. I'll be with you in your generation, Joshua. And Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you build your life on Jesus, the sure foundation, the winds will blow and the storms will come, but you will remember. Remain rooted in the firm foundation of who he is, and you will not be shaken. You will not be moved because you are planted in the supernatural. <laughs> See, what God wanted to do was get him to stop thinking natural, stop thinking being dependent on these things that are temporary. You know what? You might have some disappointments. I'm not saying we ignore those. What I am saying is, is when I put my full confidence and faith in God, I know he's going to bring me through it and bring me out of it. I'm not denying this crazy, it, this is a crazy time. It's a, a messed up world. I'm not denying any of that. I'm well aware of what is going on. I just have chosen to place my faith more in God and his promises and the covenant that I'm in with him than what is happening in my world. Amen. See, at some point, you've got to develop a faith that perseveres and learns to triumph. You know, adversity can be good. I mean, not that you welcome it, not that you look for it, but adversity can actually cause you to grow more in times of adversity than in times of peace. 
It's sometimes in the, in the, where nothing's going on and it, it's where we kind of sit back even more than, than ever and we just kind of, you know, enjoy the moment. We're really not pressing in. See, when adversity comes, it makes you more desperate. It presses you in even more to God. It says, God, I need you more in 2021 than I did before. This world is crazy. It's messed up. And it may not get any better right now, but I'm not waiting on it to get better for me to be better. I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to pursue you more. I'm going to lean into you more like never before. See, 2020 was my greatest year yet. Not, I'm not saying based off what happened. If I told you what happened, you would say that's messed up to say something like that. Crazy stuff happened. We, we, we saw some things that we were disappointed in. Lost family members we love. I'm not saying that because nothing happened. I'm telling you it because in the face of adversity, I serve a God who says, I will make you on top and never at the bottom. It doesn't matter what hell sends against you. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. And everything that rises up against you, we condemn it. This is our hour for what God has called us to do. And in adversity, we rise, baby. In adversity, adversity is my platform to go to another level. If, if, it wants to, if hell wants to come at you, if the fire wants to come at you, get ready because the fourth man will show up in the fire. His name is Jesus. You were born for adversity. You were born to rise in adversity. This is our time. This is our time. This is our time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all be seated. I love this. Woo. I love this church. Thank God. Adversity. Well, you know, I just wish it would go back to normal. Maybe normal won't make you grow. Maybe normal won't take you to the heights that God wants to take you. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you pray for. Maybe instead of asking God to take it out of your life, you ought to pray, God, make me stronger. Build my faith even more. Develop me and you so I don't fall in times of, 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 of the battle. L let me just show you for a moment. Go with me to uh, Romans chapter 4. Because I want you to see this principle that was lived out in verse 18. Even when there was no reason for hope. Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would be the father of many nations, receives a promise at 90 years of age, doesn't see it come to pass. It's 10 years later. And then the Bible says that Abraham's faith did not weaken. Even though he was about 100 years of age and he figured his body was as good as dead and so was Sarah's womb. Everything that he looked at in the natural told him, you can't, you won't, it'll never happen. But he understood my blessing is unconditional. My blessing is not based off what is happening by what I can see. I have a blessing that's not contingent or dependent upon any man under the heavens. My blessing is contingent upon my obedience to what he said for me to do. That removes every difficulty in your life and keeps it very simple. Because if I will obey and I will believe, I will see the goodness of God in my life. And the Bible says this. Abraham, think about this. Verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promises. In fact, everybody say in fact. His faith grew stronger. Woo! he dog. I haven't said that in years. His faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. Hmm. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. He goes on. 
And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it was just, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe the one raised Jesus Christ our Lord from the dead. I want you to see this. He was saying, Abraham, what should have made him weaker, made him stronger. What should have caused him to doubt and to move into unbelief should have moved him. It should have moved him out of faith, but it actually developed a stronger faith. See, sometimes you don't see it, but you're actually developing. You might not like the feeling of it. I don't like in the natural the feeling of 2020, but I'm telling you, hell through its best, and I'm still standing. Hell through its best, and you're still here. Hell through its best, and you kept moving. And I'm telling you, there's something that James said is that that that. that Consider it pure joy, the testing of your, your faith and the trials you go through. Because when you do that and you walk through it, you actually are getting stronger. You don't even see it. But you're developing a strong faith that is not movable, that is unshakable. And what God was saying was this. Even when Abraham didn't see it at 91, he said, I still believe. Even when he didn't see it at 93, I still believe. At 97, I still believe. At 98, I still Still believe and 99 I still believe and a hundred years of age he looked at his body he looked at Sarah's body he looked at what was happening in his world and yet he said I choose his promises over my perspective I choose his promise over what I can understand and I'm telling you if there was ever a day the, the people of God need to rise up and say we will not be moved we will not be shaken everything else around us will be shaken but not us as the children of the most high God because we have been rooted and grounded in the cornerstone Jesus the one the builders rejected they continue to reject him but I will tell you there is one name that's still under heaven by which we can be saved there is still one name under heaven by which if you build your life upon Jesus the storms will blow the storms will come but you will stand there in the boat and you will speak peace be still I'm not waiting on the conditions to be perfect in my my life to see the blessing I will see the blessing even when the storms rage around me I will see his hand of provision and protection they're going to be on my family in 2021 yes. stop getting your eyes on man get your eyes in and your faith off of a man or a party you know what's interesting in Isaiah 6, the Bible says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, and I saw him high and lifted up. I saw the glory and the train of his robe fill the whole temple. You know, maybe sometimes there's some things in your life that you've exalted or you've placed more faith in than in the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe, you know, maybe some things have to be moved out of the way in order for you to have a divine perspective and a full reliance on Jesus. Maybe there's some things that even in your life today that you place more faith in than you have even what Jesus wants to do in your life. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes those things you thought were helping you may be the very things that were hindering you. Come on, what, what is it in your life that you're leaning on so strong? But here's what I see, Abraham. When he didn't see it, the Bible said he got stronger. When he didn't see it, he got a little bit stronger. Can I just tell you, we're a stronger church than we've ever been in the history of this church. We are the strongest. We are 
we are making the most impact. Why? Why? Because of this principle. That our promise, the plan God has, the purpose God has for this church is not rooted in man. Nor is it dependent upon man. It is a promise that no matter what is happening in the world, it will come to pass. He was saying, get your eyes. Hey, Moses is gone. Quit putting all your faith. It, it, now I'm trying to move in your generation. You know, God wants to do some supernatural things. Matter of fact, God wants to do some amazing things in 2021. Some amazing things. So just t- tell your neighbor, God's about to do some amazing things. You know what's on the horizon for every child of God that will push in and believe? See, here's the thing. When Abraham faced the facts, he faced the facts, his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's. He wasn't in denial. He looked at the facts. He woke up every morning thinking, in the natural, there is no way. He looked at it. But the Bible says, when he saw those things, he only got stronger. Why? Because he crossed over into putting his confidence in the promise of what God said over what he could see in the natural. And the Bible says that God said to him, I'm going to do some new things in you. Can I just remind you, God is going to be faithful to us. You are not going to have to worry or be in fear. Matter of fact, you know, in the Bible, there's two types of creatures that God references and kind of mirrors himself and and speaks to in the Bible. One's the eagle, the other's the lion. Do you know that eagles actually soar the highest when adversity is the greatest? Why? Because they take all the wind and the storm that w- is sent to destroy or, or crush or, or harm things and they take and they use what is being leveraged against it to go even higher. Come on, I see that happening in your life in this new year. Stop saying, well, you know, I wish it'd get back to this. I wish I... Maybe God wants you to go through some things to get you stronger for what he has for you next. Instead of wishing things were a certain way, why don't you just say, God, your will be done. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to prosper. I'm going to succeed in whatever you've called me to do in this season, in my life. I'm not waiting on something out there to happen so that I can fulfill the plans and purposes of God. I'll fulfill them regardless of what's happening out there. Why? Because it's either all God, in, in God's word is all true or it's all a lie. It's either real or it's not. So either he has the promises and he, he who, is, who has spoken it is faithful or he's not faithful at all. He's, you know what? It was interesting. He said, you're not going to fail. You're not going to fail, Joshua. Can I just tell you, you're not going to fail. You're not going to fail. As a matter of fact, he went on. He said, you're not going to fail and I'm not going to abandon you. Do you think God's going to abandon us? It doesn't matter who's in the White House. It re- you know, we have our preferences, but that ship sailed. It's time to get to business. Okay. It's time to, to, to march on as the army of God okay. and stop acting like what happened there was the hope of the world. Hope of the world's in the church. That's what, that's what I read. Hope of the world is in, in Jesus Christ yeah. and, the, and the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. Listen, they've tried to shut this gospel down for thousands of years. They tried to come against and bring adversity for thousands of years. And guess what? The, churches, the church of Jesus Christ is stronger now in the, in the whole entire world, not just this nation that it's ever been. They did a recent study. Christianity is on the rise in all the nations of the world. Why? You can't stop what God has started. If man built it, it would be done. Matter of fact, that's what the religious uh, teacher Galileo said. He said, if this is born of man, it will shut down in a few years. We've seen rebels rise up and then fall. And we've seen them start these, you know, these things. And they've risen and fallen. Don't worry about it. He said this, if it's a man, it will die. But if it's born of God, you will not be able to stop it. I'll tell you, you are an unstoppable force with God. 
This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This isn't the church, uh, 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 you know, this isn't the church, a religious church. This isn't just a church, a country club. This isn't a business. This is the church and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And I, I see you getting stronger. I, I'm not worried at all. I'm excited. Because with great adversity comes great opportunity. Come on. What, take, what will take others down will cause you to rise. There will just be more opportunities. There will just be more. And, and there will be more opportunities to lead people to Christ. Because they'll need it. The world needs it right now. How many know the world is more open to Jesus Christ now than it ever has been? Some of them aren't, but a lot of them are. I'm telling you, we, we're, start, we're seeing people come to Christ. People come, you know, to this place. Why? Because they realize that what I'm doing right now is not working. I got to get back to church. I got to get back to God. I got to get back and, and see what God's about. Some of you, it's been a while since you've been in church, but you say, you know what? Something's not right about this year. Something's not right about my world. Something's not right. Can I just tell you that's a recipe for a move of God? Can I just tell you that's a recipe? When things start shaking all around, it's it's a recipe for revival. It's a recipe for the outbreaking of the Spirit of God. It's a recipe for miracle, signs and wonders. I'm telling you, this is our greatest hour. This will be the church's finest hour this year in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he said to him in Joshua, he said, you'll cross the Jordan. And then you'll take the land. You'll cross the Jordan and you'll take the land. There'll be things in your life. The Jordan was at flood level. Matter of fact, if you read in Joshua 3, you see it was at flood stage. In other words, there are things in the natural that are going to seem impossible this year. There are going to be some things that seem out of your control. There are going to be some things. Matter of fact, he said, not only are there going to be things that are out of your control, but there are going to be enemies that are still in the promised land. In other words, he said, but he said, if I've called you to do those things, he said, then I want you to be strong and courageous. I don't want you to fear what's in front of you. I don't want you to back down from what's ahead of you. And he said, listen, you're going to cross the Jordan, you're going to take the land. Come on, you know what you're going to do? You're going to cross the Jordan. You're going to take the land. You're going to cross over what seems to be impossible. You might say, like them, they didn't have the resources. They didn't have the power. They didn't have the military background. You might be saying that today. God, how can I do it? Am I even qualified? Do I have what it takes to do that? How can that even uh, be accomplished in my life? You might be saying all the things that, that Moses and Aaron and, 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 and Joshua and all these people of faith in that time period were saying. They were saying, how are we going to do it? Am I even qualified? But God said, your qualification is found in your obedience and your yieldedness. Your qualification is in your obedience and your yieldedness to me and to my will. You might say, I don't have the resources. Can I just tell you? God didn't ask you to have the resources. He asked you to have faith. Because faith will possess and bring and attract in the resources. The millions of dollars we're going to need to build the next 10 campuses. They're gonna, it's going to come to us. Because it's not born of God. It's, it, it's not born of man. It's born of God. Whatever it is, it will be attracted to us. My eyes are on Jesus. My eyes are on building his kingdom. And he will attract the provision of whatever is needed to fulfill the mandate he's given us. If God said it, that settles it. It's a done deal. Because if he said it, we believe it. He always keeps his word. If he said it, who am I to question? If he said it, why? You know what he's asking from you? Just obey. Just believe. Come on, there's some things in 2021 that are ahead of you. I'm just telling you, I think this is the greatest hour. 
for the church. Those who are staying connected to Jesus and to what the work of the Holy Spirit is doing, this will be our finest hour by far. I mean, it's not even going to be comparable. And here you are wishing it was going to be different. When you look back, I mean, 2021 in the natural was a terrible year in the natural. Can I tell you in the supernatural, it was our greatest year yet. We reached new levels of people. We saw God bless us beyond what we could ever do. 2021. See, the greater the pressing, the greater the glory. He said, Paul said, I was pressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because any time there is oppression, what is not rooted in God will crumble. What is rooted in God will rise. And the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of His Christ. And He shall reign forever and forever. I'm not connected to a world that's going down I'm connected to a God and a kingdom that has no end and I will not be one of those people that think my blessing and my purpose and the plans that God has for my life are are conditional off what's happening in the world I will have my greatest year yet you know why because God's hand is upon us God's anointings on your life it's on this church it's on your family when he showed up to Abraham in Genesis 15 he said Abraham I just want to remind you you might not have seen the promise of your of, of Isaac just yet you might not have seen what I promised you but but I came just to remind you I, I'll take a pause break because you seem to be losing perspective and I need to just remind you that I am your shield I am your very great reward. I, if I started it, I will finish. He said, I, I, I'm your everything, Abraham. Abraham said, but what about this one area? I, I'm not seeing it. God said, I will do it. And it may look impossible. But I'm telling you, what looks impossible is just a recipe for a miracle. I can't wait to see the miracles that break out. I can't wait to see the thousands of people that come to know Jesus. I can't wait to see the harvest of souls that's going to come. I can't wait to start a fourth service. And guess what? When we launch that, God will fill that too. And He'll bring in the workers. And He'll bring in the harvesters. And he'll raise up the people. Why? Because any adversity you see in the Bible always made the church stronger. Always grew the church more. It just started multiplying. Tried to shut them down. And they were like, now there's 5,000 more got saved. And Peter stands up filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to talk more about that tonight. Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4. Peter stands up filled with the Holy Ghost and he said what you rejected what you thought was foolishness God has made the cornerstone the very foundation of everything God built was Jesus and he said then he went on and he said God is a God of miracles to what you've seen today God will continue to do and the Bible says that many more believed whatever might come and you know what they said they didn't know how to handle they said can you just okay can you just not talk about Jesus and then we'll be good and they said do you think we will obey you, man, over God? I'm telling you. Whatever comes, 
whatever might unfold over this year, we will keep preaching Jesus. We will keep advancing the gospel. We will keep doing what God has called us to do. And if, if people, whether it's big tech, whether it's big, you know, these big tech companies want to try to shut down the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, it's going to be a big mistake to come against the Lord Jesus Christ. If there ever comes a time where the enemy overplays his hand to shut down the church, I'm telling you it'll be his worst day ever. Because the power of God and the grace of God will always be greater than the work of the devil. Until the church is raptured out, I'm telling you it's God's world and it's God's people that are here to set the course of what history looks like. So whoever comes and goes from office, it's not, my purpose and mandate is not based off what I see. It's based off what I've been told. So stop putting your hope in things that are temporary. You know, the last thing he told Joshua was this. He said, think about what he told him. He said, don't you be afraid and don't get discouraged. Why? What did that have to do with? That had to do with the position of his heart. You guard your heart because your tendency is to be afraid. He said, you guard your heart because you're going to, it seems like it's going to be discouraged by what you see. I'm telling you, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what he said. My, ar- my marching orders comes from the commander in chief, the Lord Jesus Christ who, can I just remind you, is the King of all kings and Lord of all lords. The the Ancient of Days, the Alpha, the Omega, the one with fire in his eyes that's coming back for his bride. His name is Jesus. And I am confident. I see a church getting stronger. I see a church growing. I see a church that the devil's afraid of, that's on the rise. I see a church that, that walls won't be able to contain the move of what, what God is about to do. I see a church full of miracles, signs, and wonders. I see a church filled with the power of the Holy Ghost that sees the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit in, in operation in the business, in the workplace, in the, in the church. I see a church that's on the rise. I see a church that has been, been built on the strong foundation of Jesus, that we are rising up in this last hour, that we're taking our place and we're going to see history made. Why don't you stand to your feet this morning? Why don't you go ahead and give Jesus some praise this morning and thank Him for what He's about to do? You finished what you started.